All right, and now concluding our tour of our phylogeny, we'll be looking at the rest of the mammal orders. And again, this is quite a paraphyletic group. If we were to track back to the ancestor here, we would not be including all these taxa here. That would make it paraphyletic. So we're going to look at elephant shrews, our third group that has shrews, and a bunch of other placental mammal groups, and then our marsupials and our monotremes. So elephant shrews, macroskelids, they're named because they have kind of an elephant nose here. Again, shrew is a common name. It's kind of a generic name for something that's like a little sort of rodenty type mammal that isn't a rodent. So this is tubula dentata, aardvarks. The name comes from tubula for like tubular and then dentata for mouth or teeth. So they have like tube sort of mouth here. And these are also uh, anteaters, right? They have the claws there for break open ant mounds and termite mounds and then the long, the long mouth for eating them. These are Cyrenians, so manatees, dugong, and sea cows. So they get their name because after being at sea for weeks without ever seeing a woman and being sunstroked, when people first got to the Americas and saw these things, they mistook them for beautiful women or something like that. Anyway, so this is a manatees. They live in the water, they eat plants. This is a young, actually suckling, because the, the mammary glands for manatees are actually right up kind of in the armpits of these flippers. So this is another one of the species of mammals that has kind of evolved back into the water, right? So we saw, we saw seals and sea lions before, we saw cetaceans, and then we also have this order, Cyrenians, that have evolved back into the water. So you have multiple independent instances of animals evolving back into the water after having evolved out of the water hundreds of millions of years ago. Um, Hyracoidea is the hyrax, so this looks kind of like pica or one of those sorts of organisms, but they have a number of physical features that make them very distinct from all the other sorts of you know, small to medium-sized mammals. So they're related to proboscideans, so the name here makes sense, right? Proboscis is a word for nose, and elephants have these very large, flexible, and dexterous um, noses that they use for feeding or for fighting or for things like that. It's interesting, certainly when I was a kid and thinking about animals, I totally would have expected elephants and rhinos and hippos to all be really closely related to each other, right? These three biggest land animals. But if you go back and look at the tree, you can see that they're actually not particularly closely related to each other at all, which is kind of a surprise, right? I totally thought these guys and rhinos were like closely related. Elephants are actually quite intelligent. They've done a number of studies showing that they have kind of maternal leadership of their groups. And there's a memory from season to season where they take the same routes when they migrate. And in fact, studies have shown that they pick not the most direct route but they pick the route that involves the least going up and down hills so as to actually spend the least amount of energy going from one place to another, which is kind of indicative of a quite high intelligence. So it's a shame that they also have these tusks, so we spend a lot of time killing them. Okay, marsupials. This is the group that doesn't have a true placenta, and they give birth to very, very small offspring. So here's an example of a newborn marsupial here. They basically give birth to fetuses that then crawl up and finish what would be internal development in placental mammals. They finish that in the pouch and marsupials. And so there's a number of different marsupials. So they are the major, well, they're essentially the only mammal group in Australia. So they've um, speciated to fill those ecological niches there. Koala, sugar glider, feather tail glider, some of them are very cute. You've heard of the Tasmanian Devil cartoon. There's also an actual Tasmanian Devil animal. Kangaroos hauling their babies around for a long time. And then the cutest marsupial is a wombat. And a nice thing about wombats is their pouch actually opens on the bottom because they dig through earth. They kind of dig tunnels a lot. And if their pouch opened at the top, it would get full of dirt. So in fact, it opens on the bottom, unlike a kangaroo pouch. And then finally, monotremes. This is the group of mammals that are basal to all other mammals. So they lay eggs. So there's the platypus, which you can see here. And this picture is interesting. This guy is wearing these heavy gloves to work with the platypus. It doesn't seem that fierce. But male platypus actually they have a spur on their limbs that has a toxin that causes an incredible amount of pain. And basically, if you get essentially stung by a platypus, you're hospitalized. And um, turns out pain medication doesn't work very well to, to dull the pain. So you're basically taken out of commission for a week or two if one of these little guys stings you. 
And then there's two species of echidna, and echidna have this really weird feature that here's an echidna penis, and it's got four tips. We should never underestimate the power of evolution to create all sorts of strange and, and wonderful things in nature.